Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video and the one we're doing is this head. This is a Promax full CNC ported. Hopefully the camera captures it well. 370 cc's big block Chevy head. I am flowing it on my side digital 680 bench. 4625 bore, no exhaust pipe. I'm gonna share the numbers, but before I do that, I'm gonna take it off here so I can show you what the actual ports look like. Then I can show you the flow numbers and you can make your judgment. But let's get to it. Okay, here's the head. I'll give you some rundown, some of the specs. The intake runners are 370 cc's. I'm not for sure which one that is. So the reason why I say that is because every big block has a long port and a short port. The long port's the one they usually advertise the flow numbers for because if you look at the way it comes, it aims the air towards the center, it flows more compared to the short one, which aims right at the cylinder wall. I flow both, so you get both numbers. The intake valve is a 2350 and the exhaust valve is a 1800. So this is a much bigger one. You really can't use this head uh, on a 4310 bore. Physically, it might work, but it's not ideal because the valve will be so shrouded. This is made for really like four or five bore and up. So anyway, you'd probably do that anyway because it's just the runner size itself at 370 cc's. It's pretty good size. Sorry about the strobe effect. Turns out my flashlight's is starting to act weird. I don't know if even the flashlight or the camera. But anyway, 45 degree seats on both intake and exhaust. Pretty common. Chamber size I'm not 100% sure on. It's going to either be 119 cc's or 122. Probably could be anything because... I imagine when you order them, and I am a Promax dealer, that you can have them specify what chamber and they'll just mill it down to get it there. Now, it may cost you more, but it is what it is. And the reason why I say that is because the basis for this casting, I got to take that away. The basis for this casting is the 317 head that they sell from Promax. That base casting is a 119cc chamber. So, just doing some obvious things here. When you do the work where it gets it here, and as you can tell, there's no shadows. What I mean by shadows is there's no as cast finish you see in this. And to do that, the machine has to grind the entire thing. So obviously if it starts at 119 cc's and you grind it anyway, the chamber size itself is going to get larger. So my thinking is probably what happens is after they get done doing the CNC work, they'll mill them to get the chamber back to 119 cc's. So anyway, there's that. Now on the chamber side, since we're here, and this is a good view. You see how I have from here to here dug out? I'm gonna show you the flow numbers, but I want you to see this. When you dig out from right here to here, which I know you can see the little dip there, when that happens, typically this really helps low the flow. The, you know, I know you're thinking, well, should I do that? Not necessarily, because typically what we have to have happen is the top cut comes keeps going all the way into it. And as you can tell, it's scooped out, then it kind of goes flat. So scooping it out like this helps slow lift flow, but once the valve opens more, it's actually more of a hindrance, which you'll kind of could see. Just something. As far as like, you see this where the valve job is, there's a little, little bit ridge left from the valve job. That's the only spot that's left. So an overall, very good. I don't know how many CNC heads when they do the valve job is left with a pretty good ledge. This, that's it. And this is nothing and it's only from here to here. So good job on that. Um, Everything else about it looks pretty good, uh, but I do want to show you this. Sorry about the strobe effect. I have, I don't know if it's the camera or the, I don't know. This is the long port, and I know some people are going to spot this. Let me just turn it off and turn it back on. I'm sorry. I just don't want to record for the fourth time. Nope, doesn't matter. See that hole there? That's the head bolt hole. So the head bolt goes through that hole. And that's what you see there. This is normal. On every big block Chevy head I port, and I only port aluminum heads, I will break through And on the long ports. You don't have that problem on the short port because the bolt's so far over, it's not an issue. But on the long ones, you will every time. It's not something to worry about. If you're running on a stock block, you just put, like you normally would, you put thread sealer up at the top, which you would do anyway, or at the threads anyway. This probably isn't going on the stock block anyway, but what you will do no matter what is you put sealer on the washer and nut if you're running a stud or the washer on the top of the head bolt up to the top, you'll put some silicone there to prevent it from sucking oil into the port. If done right, it's never an issue. So I don't know how many I've ever done and never an issue. Just 
I don't want people to be like, oh my gosh, it's a hole. Yeah, it's for a reason. But anyway, the pores look really good and I have the measurements for them. So I'll go ahead and show you the measurement. Sorry about the pink paper. I just happened to grab it, did not think about filming. So I'll get closer so you can kind of see. So the L and the S means long or short. The throat came in at 91.1% on both long and short. Perfect, pretty good. Bowl was like 2.381 or 101% on the long runner. A little bit shorter on the um, short runner at 100%. The short side area, which this is how I measure them. Which I'm gonna flip it over this. So if I look down on the port, this is the apex. This is where the peak of the short side is, right here. I measure across and then up and down. And I get my that's how I get my area measurement at the short side. So on the long runner, it's 411, and on the short one, it's 421, 4.21 inches. So it's actually a little bit bigger there. This is different. This is the push rod. So, you know, our push rod goes through here. So what I do is I measure across here and up and down, same area thing. And what you'll see here is the long runner is 4.21 and the short one's 413. And you might say, how is that possible? Why is that? Well, let's look at the port here. Okay, that right there, which I'm gonna use my strobing light, but focus on that. That's a lump right here in the port. Let me get my light. Sorry about the strobe effect. Can you see it? See that bump there? That bump there, I'm gonna lay the head down. See it now? That bump is because of the push rod slot. My thought is they probably did some grinding initially and realized, shoot, there's not enough in the casting. If we make it a perfect round blend, it'll break through on the side. So in other words, probably whenever this got made, that side got moved over too far. Uh, not from the porting, whoever did the port work, but the, it was cast too far over. And if they made this perfectly smooth, it'd break through, so they left a little bump there. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Speaking of which, though, the same thing happens on the exhaust side. Uh, give me a second. Ugh. Okay, the exhaust has a bolt hole right here. That's it. You could tell the bump there. Let me get another one. See it? Everyone has it. In all fairness, whenever I'm grinding these, typically I'll make this, you can make it perfectly flat. It might blister a little bit, if anything. What I mean blister is, it's not really broken through, but if you shine a light through this, through the head bolt hole, you'll see that the aluminum is moved over. It's blistered. In other words, it's thin. It does not hurt. Same thing with the head bolt hole on the intake. It does not hurt if you break through there. For instance, let me see if I got one. Yep, I got one right here. This is a BRX head. And this is dirty as all get out. But there's the hole, right? Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, boom, right there. On good heads, we just break through. You're like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. That's not the way to do it. It doesn't hurt a thing. This, you don't even have to put sealer at the top. Just, I mean, well, you're going to anyway. You're gonna put some molly lube because that's how what you should do whenever you're torquing anyway. But it ain't gonna affect anything. That is hurts nothing. Of course, if you were in a stock block, same thing. You're gonna still put thread sealer on the your threads. However, if it leaks there, it would have leaked water all the way up here anyway. So whether it leaks in the port or here, that's because you didn't seal the threads. But chances are this is going on an aftermarket block because it needs to be on a four or five bore. This is no issue. It's not an issue anyway. This one's already plugged. So like they left extra material so it would never break through. What I was trying to get at is that if you grind this smooth, you'll gain a little bit of flow. Not a ton. Don't get in thinking like, oh my gosh, if I do that, I'm going to gain 20 CFM. You, you're you not. You'll gain four. Four CFM. But don't be worried if you ever break through there. It's not a big deal. It's going to get sealed. Once you've got the head stud through, it's, it hurts nothing. But anyway, that's that. But let's face it, you're all here to see what it actually flowed. So let me get the flow numbers here. Here we go. This is the long runner intake, and this is the short runner. And the ones I really, really focus on is four, six, and peak. So if I look at the 400 number, remember this is a big bore. This is a 4625 bore, a very large bore. 297 at 400 
and 301 on the short runner. That number is really, really good. Now, don't get too bummed if the numbers are slightly down here because on a big block that's bigger inch stuff, we're up in the 900 lifts. So don't get too killed up with this. For instance, there's several head hunters from Brodix that'll be like 291, but then they go like 480 up here. So this isn't the end of the world if you've got a lot of lift. But for most of you, that's an outstanding number. 300, it's re really, really good. Really, really good. So having a bigger bore also helps too. When you float on a bigger bore, these co go quite a bit up. If you float on a 4310, you're gonna drop like 20. So that's a hurt. At 500, we're at 345 on the short runner and 349 on the long runner. At 600, 386 and 371, so not bad. Peak, 428 on the long runner, 407 on the short runner. This is where I'm gonna get a little critical on that. It's just me. Those aren't bad flow numbers, especially the lower lift stuff. That's really, really great. But 428 CFM from a port that's 370 cc's, and wherever my paper went, there it is. This size runner to move that size of peak airflow is it's not the greatest. So yes, it moves quite a bit of air, but not for as big as it is size-wise inside. And you could forget runner CC all you all all together. These are the more important measurements. And for the size that they are, it probably should have moved more air. And I do believe Promax claims these flow like 450. They just didn't do it on my bench. And I, I flow it the same way I do every other one. On a standard port design, so you have no raised runner, valves are in the standard position. Really on my bench, the really, really good ones will go 440s, maybe 450. And I mean really good heads. There's been a few exceptions where the headhunters have gone 495, and then I had the ones that are on my Camaro, they went 485, but they're in a standard position. So the headhunters were moved and went 495, and the non-moved uh, Brodix one went 485. But really, um, it's not bad. I don't want to get to saying this is horrible, but it's not peak flow-wise, It's I would expect it more for the size, okay? Low lift flow, so pretty much from one to really six, you're good. Really to five, actually. One to five, you're outstanding. From six on, it needs a little bit more. Now, it could be because also they didn't have a 45-degree valve job. If you put a 50-degree, you would have lost some here and gained some here. So that probably would have put it at 435, and this would have dropped to 291. However, this is the part that I was like, what? The exhaust flow. So the exhaust flow only went 279, 280 at nine, and then it actually backs up a little, which as nice as they look, and I know you're like, well, if you take out that bump there, it's probably gonna go like 300. No, it's gonna go four CFM more. It just doesn't seem that good. And I've got a reason for it. So let me, let me show you. This is why I say this. So um, if you've been following my channel, you know about the 496 dyno mill that we did a lot of testing with. And I had done, had used the Promax Project uh, Promax 317 head, so pretty much this head unported. By the way, they do have a smaller version, so this is 370 cc's. They have a 340 cc's. I have yet to see that head. But anyway, I was using just the 317s, and I float them because I want to get all that data to go with it. And I float them with two valves. This is the one that actually came with it. This is just a nail head valve. So you could tell having a tulip valve, which is what they came with, actually flowed better than the nail head valve in certain spots. So it kind of trades. See how that four, 237 to 210. But this is really, this is after doing a valve job too. So actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up. This was stock. So I'm, forget what I said about the nail head. Sometimes I get confused about the stuff I've done. This was stock. This was after I did a valve job in the milling. So this is completely stock from the, right out of the box. With their tulip valve, this is me doing the valve job. This is their ported one. So this is this. So they took a 317, they ported the exhaust, and it actually flows worse than it did to begin with. So we'll just do my worst one. So this is after I did the valve job. It picked up some spots but hurt others, and it's been heavily milled. So if you look, though, I mean, 61 to 60. So yeah, it, the ported one beat the, at one-tenth. But going on, 200, it's 120 to 128. Uh, 300, 163 to 172. 400, 209 
to 209. They kind of tied there, or well, 210 really round up. 246, I'm sorry, 241 to 246. The Anon port is better. 256 to a 268. You see what I'm saying? There's no spot where 900, no, oh, there's no spot where it beats its stock. And this is just milled in a valve job. And it made it flow worse, really, than what it did to start off with at most points. So, I mean, look, stock was 237 at 4, 209. So, I don't know. I have some ideas why I think this is. They should have blended it. So a lot of manufacturers, when you get a CNC ported head, what they'll do is they'll come in with a cartridge roll and they'll blend this right here. They'll blend the valve job in to get rid of any little ridge. And that actually helps. So there's definitely a ridge here on the short side, which my finger can't see. So we'll try to do it from this side. There's a little ridge that's back through here where the valve job ends on this side. They probably could have blended it out. Do I think it's gonna gain a whole bunch? Some? Maybe 10 CFM, but this exhaust port should be 300 CFM. And I'll say this too, because I know people are already fixing the comment. You cannot use a full winch to design an exhaust port. You can't. It's nowhere close. So even an intake flow, we get close to what the engine sees, close-ish. The exhaust, not even near. So it's moving much faster speeds than the flow bench can ever use. Heat and everything else. So you really can't use it. But what you can do, and you're like, well, you say that, and then you show us all these flow numbers. You tell the exhaust wasn't as good. The only thing I can do with the flow bench is say, this isn't as good or it's bad. So I still would have expected to see this be better than that stock, and I, and I didn't. So that was a bit of a shock on this thing. Um, just something to throw out to you now this uh, please don't think it is me saying this head's a piece of crap because i have no doubt in my mind that this thing will make gobs of power so and to be quite honest with you um it's the cheapest cnc big block head you can really get and i know it comes from china and i'm not trying to support china but i also understand um, we have to come to this point in our life we have to understand Things are so expensive now, most people can't afford stuff. It, it's, I wish everybody could buy American. But if we did that, you would have a tenth of the cars at the racetrack right now. So, I and I also know people just don't make that much money anymore. I mean, we make more money, but we have things cost so much more, they don't have extra income. So having a cheaper, viable alternative, it, it's nice. I, I don't want to get in a whole political rant, but I understand where you're coming from. Like, don't support China. I, I totally get it. But some people just want to race, you know? So this e these easily are the cheapest um, CNC ported heads that are good that you could get. So just to give you an idea, like these are a good grand, probably more than a grand, less than AFRs, um, even Brodix. And I could go on and on. So they're, they're just much cheaper. So, but I will say this. The AFR one will smoke this. Brodix ones will smoke this. I'm just being honest. It's a good head. But there's others that are better. Anyway, these are all my opinions. And I know you're like, you suck. I could tip, tap, tap, tap comments. And I guess I would too. Look, I'm no genius. Um, I'm definitely no Superman. So these are just my opinions. I'm just trying to give an honest review. So in case someone actually is like, I really want unbiased opinion because even though i sell pro max and i've said that at the beginning if they do bad they do bad if they do good they do good i'm just giving you it's what the bench says these are what my thoughts are you do what you want with them but um anyway guys remember i'm no superman i do not port cast iron heads no stock heads no 781s i do not port cast iron heads i don't know anybody that ports cast iron heads and guys thanks for supporting the channel remember i'm no superman you guys take care